Ever since the beginning, I've been critical of things on this show, mostly just music and video games. I'm critical of them just because I want them to succeed. If it's not good, it won't succeed. I reviewed music such as Slim Jesus, games like Black Ops 4 and Cold War, even people's bad takes such as 8 Thoughts, who is no longer on YouTube by the way, and we are 22 episodes in on our journey, but why did I do this show in the first place? Well, let me show you, and please bear with me while I explain all of this. This game sucks. Meet the Angry Video Game Nerd, the main inspiration of the show. But what is the Angry Video Game Nerd? Well, James Rolfe made up this character to basically make a joke about a guy complaining some old ass games that were irrelevant and no one cared about. But people started watching it and it was actually funny. Back when YouTube was independent, he uploaded a video from his VHS tape to YouTube in 2006 of him reviewing Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. It was more or less him complaining and walking through the game, but it was charming. He appeared in front of the camera during the second episode of the AVGN, which was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Also, as a side note, at this time he wasn't even the angry video game nerd, he was the angry Nintendo nerd. After this, the character would be called or referred to as the nerd within the show. This usually comes into play as the other characters are introduced, because calling him James, which is his real name, was not very ideal. So, he was called the nerd. James's angry video game nerd was a huge success and inspired many people, like Irate Gamer and JonTron. I do think when JonTron was reviewing games and not whatever he's doing now was a lot funnier and more entertaining, his comedic timing was better and it being scripted was overall better, but James has stayed reviewing games since technically 2004, and although he went through several hiatuses, he returned to uploading monthly, which is normal for these kind of videos. James inspired many, including me. So when I picked up the camera and press record in 2015, I kinda half-assed it. I had no script, no idea what I was doing, it was totally improv, plus I was reviewing music and not games. But I made a promise I would review games. The series would not continue for 3 years until I revisited the topic of Slim Jesus. My first game review wasn't until March 12th, 2019. That's a long fucking time. This episode was completely different than everything I've ever done before in What the Fuck Marine, which was talking in front of the camera, no script or anything, just talking to the camera. I went full AVGN on the Friday the 13th episode with my friend's help. I was able to make a good video, I'm very proud of that one in particular, combining improv acting, scripted voiceover, and the game review was a huge feat for me. Best thing about it is that I had help. My friends believed in my vision and helped me make it come to life. But that hasn't happened since and with how things are now in my life, I don't think things like that will happen again. Or maybe not, I don't know. But this is where it gets complicated. With the different styles of the show has kind of gave the show a identity crisis, giving an issue of how should I continue the show, what the next episode should be, how should I film it, what will I say, should I do something easy, or should I be thorough and do something more difficult, like the Friday the 13th. Let's break the fourth wall real quick. Hi, I am Marine Man. That's who I am on this show. A character called Marine Man. Tony is my name, but there's also a separate character named Tony which is also his name. But to make it simple, when other characters refer to me, they would call me Marine Man. Like how other characters would call the nerd, the nerd. I made this mistake last episode of referring myself as Tony. And then Tony would become Angry Tony. I didn't catch it until I uploaded it. I have to make sure so the what the fuck marine universe doesn't get wasted by the TVA to keep this on track cause it can get confusing really quick. I plan to do more with the marine man character and the Tony character as well. I don't really have much time to do all I want to do between music, let's plays, and this show. And work obviously. It's a time crunch. But I won't give up though, I'll find a way. Yeah I guess there's... A lot of work I need to do.
everything he does is just so perfect. Every voiceover for every game, the game he chooses to do, every shit joke he makes is just perfect. You're holding yourself to a high standard. Tony? You're setting the bar way too high. He has years of experience of filmmaking and a game review is just a walk in the park for him. Yeah, but he's just a guy with a camera and just video editing and I'm basically a nerd in the room. Yeah, very much like you. And he wasn't by himself. He wasn't a one-man band. He had help. Well, my friends are busy, so I, I guess I'm stuck with you. Yes, you are. Great. Now I'm stuck talking to myself with an overblown ego. First of all, rude. Second of all, I have my own anxieties and insecurities too. All I'm saying is that you're doing too much too fast. What do you mean? Music, let's plays, and the show? Hell, if James is a one-man band, you're the entire orchestra. Worry, man, when you see something, you envision it. Hell, even the Bagman video was all improv, but fuck, you guys made it work. And every song you have written has riled up feathers, but that didn't stop you from making your art. And your Let's Plays, though that they're not edited and the videos are really long, but they hold memories of you playing with your friends and it holds the love of your casual gaming. I know this. I lived it. Well, maybe you should live it again. Sniper Assassin, my first Let's Play. It was 2012, and I was watching a lot of Uber Hacks and Nova and Markiplier, the two who inspired me to do Let's Plays. I was young and just out of middle school. As a freshman in high school, I needed a hobby to distract me from my angsty shenanigans. I remember I tried asking this girl out, and every day she said she would give me her number the next day, and I was an idiot for believing it. Anyway, back to the game. It was a point and click sniper shooter game. Some douche killed your wife so you go on a mission to kill him and his disrespectful colleagues. Also, like that Bandicam watermark, back then OBS wasn't a thing so you had paid programs like Fraps and Bandicam have full reign on PC screen recording. It was like organized crime, dirty and unfair. I had to trial a bandy cam so I had to record in 10 minute segments before the video would cut off. The game on the other hand was very difficult. And with me having cerebral palsy, it was difficult to point and shoot with a mouse pad. Yeah, I had an old ass laptop. You can't say I didn't try. At one point, you had to interrogate a dude by shooting his arms and legs. He finally squeals and tells you where the bad guy is hiding but not before your new love interest gets taken hostage. This is how far I got into the game and I never finished it. Now Flash Player is no longer a thing so I'll never see how this saga ends. I don't care anyways because the game was ass and I hated that they fridged the female character. Okay, why, why did you show me that? Because against all odds, you found a way to do a Let's Play. Yeah, but I did Let's Plays on Facebook for an entire year before this, so... Yes, but now it's on YouTube, so now everybody can see and enjoy it. Anyway, she's about to be here in about 30 seconds or so, so I better get going. Ooh. Oh, you'll see. I guess it is true. I was inspired and besides the limitations I found a way but I don't see that I can make something as big as James does. Angry man. Oh god not you. So you want to talk about your show eh? Not with you chatting. Didn't you threaten to kill me like an episode or two ago? Don't worry about that. All that matters is that you're going to look at your show starting with the first episode. Here you go! Slim Jesus and Clout Legacy I'm sure I don't have to go over who Slim Jesus is since he is so talked about on this show to the point where I don't care to trash talk him anymore cause one, I like his music and two, he is actually a nice dude and his engineer is the hardest working person on this planet. Shout out to B-Raw by the way. So let's talk about Clout Legacy real quick. They were a group that 
quote and unquote rappers who made music about guns, drugs, and money and all that. And they were in school, by the way, so it was low-key kind of scary knowing that these guys were flexing guns in music videos while they went to my school, so yeah, there's that. They would later split up and pursue different projects, but not before Drill Time release. This episode was made right before Drill Time's music video, so this was my most popular episode holding at 2.4 thousand views, riding the coattails of Slim Jesus' popularity. The episode itself was improv and just me cracking jokes at Slim Jesus and Cloud Legacy with visual effects to help punch lines, giving the more John Tron feel of the episode. At this time, John Tron was very popular, and as inspired from him and Angry Video Game Nerd, I did my best to capture the magic. There were other episodes that were there before episode 2, but I deleted them because they did not fit What the Fuck Marine at all. But episode 2 started the reaction style episodes, where simply I would react to what video I seen or whatever, but it was edited. Not much more to say on that, just watch it for yourself. Other episodes like this are the 8 Thoughts video, the Autism Speaks video, the Social Cues and Obsession video, and all the Hampton Music episodes. My first game review and the start of the scripted styles was Black Ops 4 Zombies. I was nervous about this one, its runtime was only 12 minutes compared to the usual 20, and this was the testing the waters of how I should do game reviews. I wanted it to be longer, but didn't want to bite off more than I could chew, so I settled with what I had. Finally, we had the recap style, which was me explaining lore over a plot of a game through cutscenes and whatnot. This was the Halo 5 and Melody and Memory episodes. These were my Christmas episodes as well. I like these because they're improv and reaction put together. Also, I was familiar with the topic and the source material, so I'm not always pulling shit out of my ass. And no, I'm not constipated, I'm just making metaphors. With all these styles, I guess you can say, it makes What The Fuck Murray unique, and you don't know what you're going to get from episode to episode. That's a good thing and a bad thing. It bothers me there's a lack of structure, but it makes me feel that this show is fresh and new every time. Honestly, I don't know if I have it any other way. Alright Chad, I see why you made me take a second look at the series. It's very unique. I'm like the way down doing it. Good. There's one last thing we must talk about. Who are you? My name is Onyx. I am your nobody. My nobody or Tony's nobody? Well, actually Tony's with you. Silence! We must look at the last art form you participate in. Your music will now be judged. Fine, if this is what it has come down to. I started making music back in 2014, so my sophomore year. While I was using Let's Plays as a way to distract myself from my anxieties, I used this as a release of emotional tension. So when I released my first album to start, there was surprisingly a lot of backlash, mainly because I used names in the lyrics. But when that happened, people were talking about it. It was controversial and somewhat popular. My music was going to be a one-time thing, but I couldn't stop there. So the next year, I released the Marine Man LP, my junior year album. It was heavy focus on the school life. The album held my classic theme song, aptly named Marine Man. The song was about how I survived my suicide attempt and came back into the real world stronger than ever. This was also the album where I started posting my instrumentals of the song, so if people liked the instrumentals enough to remix them, they could. I think it's a nice gesture. This was the album where I wrote a girl of my dreams a love song and showed it to her on the bus. But this is where the obsession started within me. I liked her, and perhaps a little bit too much. But the controversy of my music reached an all-time high when the third album hit, the Hamilton Finale. It was originally called the Hamilton High Finale, until the school told me to change the name or face consequences. This album dived into the thought of my obsession, but not blatantly stating it. At this point in time, I was blindly walking and singing about her and how she didn't like me back and oh how unfair it was. There's a lot that happened between me and that girl who I mentioned on the show before, 
but I'll refrain from using her name here at least. Tony has made several videos talking about this at great length and practically there's a conspiracy behind all of it. From my friends going behind my back to the school itself having its own agenda. When Hamilton finale came out, there was a song called Final Effort. It had a line saying that I would burn my rings that I wear because it reminded me of the girl I was so madly obsessed with. The school took as a threat of arson. How did they get that? I have no idea, and worst of all, the therapist backed this up. She believed it too. So, again, I was sent to the hospital for some reason. For the school's protection, my protection, it's whatever, honestly. And when I was about to get out, my therapist said I needed to stay in longer. It was the worst two weeks of my life, and I basically got jailed for my music. An art form. If you don't think music is powerful, you're dead wrong because holy shit. One line made a whole group of people turn into a frenzy. This still happens today. Look at little Nash X. He made the song Montero and the whole world turned into a hissy. It still happens. My music hit a dry spell here with the Kingdom Hearts LP and the Marie Man LP too. They were my first two albums out of school and they got no attention. These albums were not exactly good either, probably even terrible. The other Promise album was a good return to form, but not all songs on the album were good enough. And actually, I performed some songs at Creativa. The Riemann LP3 was a huge return to controversy. I started releasing songs one by one instead of all at once, so each song got more attention, individually. I've always said names in my music, but now with them getting more attention, of course people were upset when I called them by name on the song, even if it was a footnote. The Marineman LP was a story album too, starring well me, Tony, and this Onyx guy. It was a story about taking control of the music. Should I be controversial and have the form of mental release, or should I go a different route? Finally, we have the Hamilton Revival album. Revisiting the school days and the sequel to the Hamilton finale. This was my newest album and had minimal controversy. Makes you think why my music made so many people upset at certain points and at others. I don't have an answer for that. I'm working on a new album called The Start, Another Chapter. A sequel to the start. This album, I plan to take a look at the next chapter of my life. I've been making music for so long, I made so many people upset, but that has never stopped me from sharing my art. It helped define who I am. Music, like I said, is powerful and repeatable. Much like a good movie, it never gets old. A good song can be immortalized into forever. You hear it on the radio, or maybe on a streaming platform like Spotify that can replay over and over again. Maybe that's why people got so upset. They don't want to be envisioned in a way that harms their character, in a song at least, that stays forever. But it makes me question, should I change how I do things if others get upset? Perhaps, or perhaps not. What the Fuck Marine is a show reviewing and being critical of things. When I wanted to do YouTube, I started with Let's Plays. Although the quality and overall video production and game choices were absolute shit, I enjoyed the simpler times before face cams and streaming. Before your videos had to add visual jokes every 5 seconds like every Markiplier video now through editing and whatnot, I still do things old school. The episodes are an hour long and I'm just commentating over a game. The show is unique with all the different changing styles. I'm glad I did this show this way. It gave myself the creative freedom even it lacked structure. Every episode can be new and exciting. It's like a Christmas present. You can hope you can get that Xbox you always wanted. Or you could get a PS5. Though not what you were expecting but very pleasurable to say the very least. Very similar to a What the Fuck Marine episode. Maybe you like those reaction episodes the best, but you might get an episode as good as Friday the 13th, scripted and more structured. Finally, my music has stirred the pot for the entire channel, making people upset and even ending friendships I didn't want to end. But I need the release. Like a pressure valve that's about to bust, I have so many emotions running my head, and this show and Let's Plays can't convey that. But something as powerful as music can. It's all for my mental health. And without it, I may not even be here. Granted, I could have avoided some situations if I didn't include names, but hey, can't change the past. Each of these, let's call them art forms, are things I can improve on. 
shorter episodes on Let's Plays so with maybe more editing. More structure on the show could help out a bit. And maybe less name dropping in the music side of things could be good too. But maybe that's what makes this YouTube channel mine. All the little imperfections. All the minor mishaps. And a bit of confusion to give it something. I was worried about my identity. I felt like I lost it. But maybe I had my identity this entire time. Maybe all these things are what makes me me.